I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about tips on having a boy or a girl. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for over 15 years, and I've spent years answering patients' questions about how do I have a girl? How do I make sure I have a boy? What tips and tricks do you have, Dr. Shaheen? And today we're going to go over them. I'm so excited you're here. Um, I have spent years educating anywhere I can, whether it's books, Instagram, TikTok, and here I love giving you more education in a little bit longer form. So please like this video, comment with questions that you have, and subscribe to this channel so you can learn more. You will find me saying sex of the embryos or sex selection. I don't say gender of embryos or gender selection because sex is from chromosomes and its characteristics at birth, whereas gender is a social construct and it's an identity. And so some people who have XX chromosomes might identify as a male or a boy. And so you'll hear me saying like sex selection or sex of embryos, I'm not using the word gender here because we're talking about um, X and Y chromosomes and different tips and tricks for increasing your chances of having a boy or a girl. But I just want to clarify that. So what determines the sex of an embryo? Chromosomes. Chromosomes are those stacks of genes that are in every cell in our body. And when an egg and sperm come together, half of the chromosomes come from the egg and half come from the sperm. And when they come together, that's all the genes carry things like hair color, eye color, um, all different types of characteristics. And there's two special chromosomes called the X and Y chromosome. And if the embryo has two X chromosomes, it will develop into a girl. And if it has an X and a Y chromosome, it'll develop into a boy. Now, how is that determined? Eggs only have X chromosomes and sperm can either have X or Y chromosomes. So the sex of an embryo or whether you have a boy or girl is actually up to the sperm. It is up to the male partner. So you can tell that to Henry VIII, who killed multiple wives because they did not give him a son. It was his fault the whole time. X and Y chromosomes are a little bit different. The X chromosome is larger than the Y chromosome. So a lot of the tips and tricks that people talk about in trying to determine whether you have a girl or a boy relies on the fact that the X chromosome is a little bit smaller, a little bit less DNA, a little bit lighter, and maybe sperm with X chromosomes are gonna swim faster because they're not as heavy as sperm with X chromosomes. So here are some of the myths. Number one, position matters. Nope. Not true. So the theory is, is that if you can have a position for intercourse where ejaculation gets really close to the cervix, so the sperm is delivered really close to the cervix, then the X chromosomes aren't going to swim as fast. Those Y chromosomes are going to swim really fast and they'll get there to the egg first. Okay. So missionary position, if you want to have a girl, because supposedly it the X chromosomes will be a little bit slower and other positions where ejaculation is happening closer to the cervix is going to maybe give you a higher chance of a boy. This is not proven. This is not true, but that's where that myth comes from. Myth number two, timing of intercourse. So the theory is, is that if you time intercourse close to ovulation, again, those X chromosomes are going to swim slowly. Those Y chromosomes are going to get there faster. So some people will talk about, Hey, if you have intercourse within one or two days of ovulation, you're more likely to have a boy because the Y chromosomes can swim faster. And if you have intercourse, you know, five, six days before ovulation, those Y chromosomes are going to swim really fast and they're going to be gone by the time the egg comes into the fallopian tube and the slower X chromosomes will be there. And that's how you could time intercourse to have a girl. Now, this is not proven. This is not true. And I worry about people trying to time intercourse because you really you're fertile for the six day window before ovulation. And if you're you know, really trying to limit intercourse and timing, you could be missing ovulation. You could be missing opportunities and really delaying starting your family. So I understand this theory, but it is just a myth. It is not true. Number three, how much sex you have determines whether you have a boy or a girl. 
So the theory here, again, is that if you have intercourse more often, like once a day, more than once a day, that the sperm counts, you know, the reserves in the male partner are going to go get lower and lower and only the fastest kind of Y chromosome sperm are going to get to the egg in order to fertilize. So again, this is not true. This is a myth, but the theory is, is that the more sex you have, the higher chance you'll have a boy. Again, not true. Myth number four, no orgasm if you want to have a girl. What? Yes, this is a theory. It's out there that if the female partner does not have an orgasm, there's a higher chance that the couple will conceive a girl. So the theory is, is that a more alkaline or basic or higher pH environment is going to be more beneficial for X chromosome sperm and detrimental to Y chromosome sperm. Not true. It is okay to have an orgasm. Having an orgasm or not having an orgasm does not determine whether you have a boy or a girl. Where did this get started? Fifth myth, what you eat determines whether you have a boy or a girl. And this goes back to kind of this trying to control your pH. And I read different things. So some people say if you eat more acidic food, that that's going to be detrimental to Y chromosome sperm. And so more likely to have a girl and then other things say, oh, if you have more sort of basic food, less acidic food, it's going to be more likely that you have a boy or a girl. This is all a theory. This is not true. What you eat does not determine whether you have a boy or a girl. Heat things up if you want to have a girl. So wear tight pants, get in hot tubs, get in a sauna, heat, heat, heat. Well, be detrimental to Y chromosome sperm. So if you want a girl, heat things up. No, this is not okay. And all of those things that I just listed can actually decrease overall sperm production. So you could actually be decreasing your chances of actually having a baby in your quest to have a boy or a girl. So don't follow those guidelines. So we've talked about some of the myths that are out there, you know, positions and timing and changing your diet and acidity, all of these things to try to help you have a boy or a girl. What about some of the scientific things and some of the things that are even out there on the market? So there is sperm sorting. There are companies out there that claim that they can separate why chromosome sperm from X chromosome sperm. Unfortunately, it just doesn't really work very well. If you look at the studies, it's about a 50-50 chance of getting what you wanted. In the best studies that are out there, it's like a 60% chance of if you were trying to sort for an X chromosome sperm that you actually get a girl. So it's an extra cost, it's extra intervention, and it really just doesn't work reliably. So sperm sorting, I know it's out there, but it really just is not a guarantee. So there is one way to reliably select for embryos that are XX or XY, and it requires IVF with genetic screening of embryos. IVF is in vitro fertilization. Um, and I have lots of information on this on my website, on Instagram, on TikTok. Like I want you to learn about all your options, but it is much more invasive. It can be costly for people. You're taking medications to help recruit multiple eggs, a procedure called an egg retrieval to get the eggs out of the body, fertilize eggs and sperm in the lab, watch embryos grow when the embryos are mature and developed. You can actually biopsy cells away from the embryo, freeze the embryos, and you can send the cells to a lab to test for chromosome imbalances. People do genetic screening on embryos for lots of reasons. It can decrease the chance of miscarriage. It can help select for embryos that have a higher implantation potential. One of the reasons IVF does not have the reputation of causing twins, triplets, and more is because more people are selecting for embryos with high success and transferring only one embryo. In my clinic, Pacific Northwest Fertility here in Seattle, over 90% of our patients transfer one embryo. We have incredible success rates. So you don't have to have the risk of uh, twins, triplets, et cetera, um, and still have really high success. So um, this type of treatment is really common in 
people who are doing IVF, but most of the time people are doing IVF because they need to, you know, they're having multiple miscarriages, they're having infertility, they have endometriosis, they have low sperm count, their fallopian tubes are blocked. You know, IVF is not a small undertaking and there's no guarantees with it. So sometimes people who want to do IVF for sex selection, they don't realize that IVF is not like ordering off a menu. It's not like, oh, I want a girl, therefore I wanna do IVF. And then the embryos are checked and all the embryos are X, Y, right? Like you, you can't control it and you just don't know what's gonna happen. So IVF with genetic screening can be an excellent option, but it's just really important to realize that there's limitations to technology and it can be complicated. There can be risks and really talk to your doctor about it. So it's super common to wonder how can you have a girl or how could you have a boy? And the X and Y chromosome are different, um, you know, in size. And so these theories are interesting and they, you know, are intriguing, but really position doesn't change whether or not you're going to have a boy or girl timing of intercourse doesn't change whether you're going to have a boy or a girl, how much intercourse you have, whether the female partner has an orgasm or not, doesn't change whether you have a boy or a girl, what you eat doesn't change it. And heating up the, the area in order to try to kill off Y chromosome sperm. No. Um, and some of these things, you know, like heating up the area or really limiting how much intercourse you're having in order to try to time things really well, they can actually decrease your chances of getting pregnant in that quest of trying to have a boy or a girl. Um, the sorting of sperm that's out there in labs, it really is not much more than just chance and kind of 50-50. So really the only way to control or test embryos before you get pregnant for X and Y chromosomes is to do it with IVF and chromosomal screening of the embryos. So this is a pretty controversial topic in my field when the ability to screen embryos for chromosomes was first developed. This is one of the first things that came up. And there are certain diseases that are X-linked diseases like hemophilia, for example. Hemophilia is a bleeding disorder and it um, the genetic defect or mutation is on the X chromosome. And so a person who has two X chromosomes, if they only have, you know, one X chromosome that's affected with that mutation, they don't have the disease. But if their brother inherited that same X chromosome with the mutation and his other sex chromosome is a Y chromosome, he will have hemophilia. So one of the first uses of genetic screening of embryos was actually to select embryos for their X and Y chromosomes in order to prevent passing on a disease. And it's been controversial, like whether you should use IVF with chromosomal screening for um, embryo selection, family balancing, choosing boys and girls. And in the United States, there's no law governing. It's really up to each clinic and, um, and kind of talking to your doctor about pros and cons. But there are some countries that absolutely don't allow it. So it is, um, it's very interesting. And I just think it's really important to kind of take all of this information, talk to your doctor about options and figure out what's right for you. I hope this was an interesting video for you. It was a really interesting topic for me to cover. Please like this video if you found it interesting or you learned something. Comment with questions that you have or other topics you wanna to cover and subscribe to this channel. Stick around for more learning.